You're watching Kelly Metters, lead pastor of Connect Church. Check us out online at connectchurchjacks.org. We hope you enjoy. We're headed into our fourth week of the Spirit series. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. We started off last week talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we've been talking about that uh, the Bible says that it's not God's will for us to be ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. Didn't we say that? We talked about that, uh, uh, that the gifts should be active in our everyday lives. Everybody doesn't have to operate in the gifts of the Spirit every Sunday, and that's exclusively the only time you get the opportunity to do that. You get to operate and lift Jesus high in your everyday life. That These are things that God wants to use in your life on an everyday basis. And so uh, we talked about that. And uh, we talked about that, uh, that Jesus wants to move through you. Not just through the preacher, not just through the special people, special people. Not just, it's not like that with the kingdom of God. God wants to move through believers. Hey, preachers are believers before they're preachers. And God wants to move through the life of every believer. And so uh, that's what we talked about. And we talked about that uh, we need to be willing to let God move through our lives. Amen? Amen. All right. And I talked about the different gift divisions last week. I talked about the revelatory gifts, the power gifts, and the vocal gifts. This week, we're going to look at two of those, um, hopefully. If not, we'll look at one of those. We'll see. But uh, we're going to start out looking at the revelatory gifts. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can, uh, we can come to you with sh- full assurance of faith in Jesus' name. Lord, that we can open our hearts to your Holy Spirit and know that we're not going to get something weird, something counterfeit, something bad, but that, Lord, you know how to give good gifts to your children. Lord, if you said in your word, if, if, if I as an earthly father know how to give, give, give good gifts to my children, uh, Lord, if they ask me for bread, I'm not going to give them a stone. If they ask me for a fish, I'm not going to give them a snake. Lord, you said that if I know how to give good gifts to my kids and me not being perfect at heart, me being uh, even a person because of human nature is corrupt, Lord, how much will you give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? So, Lord, we can have full assurance of faith that when we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit, that is what we will get. Lord, I love you. Thank you for the way uh, that you want to present this. Lord, help me to do a good job of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's take a look at some different things this morning. I want to take a look to start with at the revelatory gifts. We talked about, okay, are there these gifts? What are exactly are they? We want to take some, a little bit of an in-depth look at some of them. All right, let's take a look at the word of knowledge this morning. I want to take a look at the word of knowledge. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 says this, now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, okay? And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, here am I, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight at the house of Judas. Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. Now, many of you know that Saul was the guy who was persecuting and just wreaking havoc in the church, about church, the Bible says. He was later changed in character and changed into the apostle Paul that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. But before he was that, he was, terri- he was of somebody that they were terrified of in the church because he would haul people off to jail and have them killed and all this. And so God says to this guy, and notice it just says a disciple. It doesn't say fivefold minister. It doesn't say the guy was a prophet. It doesn't say the guy was a pastor. It just said he was a disciple. He was a regular guy. So he says, now there was a disciple at Damascus called Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He said, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he's praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. So what had happened is Saul had run face to face into Jesus on the road to Damascus. Saul was the only guy in the scripture that ever asked and answered a question in the same breath. When he came close to close, face to face with Jesus, this great light, and the Lord spoke to him. And uh, Saul asked him, he said, who art thou, Lord? 
He said, who are you? I don't know who you are, but I know what you are. And what that is is, Lord, you're supreme in authority, and I go ahead and just submit my life to you now. I don't know who you are, but I know what you are, and that's in charge. And so he's blind, but he comes out of that experience blind. And so this disciple, Ananias, the Lord speaks to him and tells him, hey, I want you to go lay hands on Saul. He's at this place, and, and I want you to go lay hands on him. You'll see if you read further on down, Ananias says, Lord, you sure? I heard about you know about this guy, right, Lord? <laughs> it's kind of funny. But what we're talking about here is a word of knowledge. And so this is what I want you to see. There's a couple of things here. One of them is a word of knowledge. So a word of knowledge, what actually is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation of some piece of information concerning the past or the present. So a word of knowledge is something that concerns the past or the present. A word of knowledge is something that you have no way of knowing outside of uh, supernatural knowledge. Like you didn't learn it in school, you didn't, you know, you didn't read it online, you didn't, uh, you know, you didn't check out somebody's text messages and find out what it was. It's something that the Lord told you in secret directly to you that you have no natural way of knowing. Um, there was a situation with, with a, a family member of Marcia and, and mine. Um, they were having a little party at the house, and, uh, and they were kind of cutting up, and they had this picture uh, on, on the table, and they had this glass picture on the table, and they had this white stuff on the picture. Y'all know where I'm going with this? And they had it all chopped up and divided up into little bitty lines on this picture on the table. And these people's mom, she was a woman of God, and the Lord spoke to her. And uh, she picked up the telephone, the Lord spoke to her, and showed her a vision of, of what was going on. And uh, she called, and she said, I almost said the woman's name on tape, that's not good. But uh, she called, and she said, hey, she said, I don't know what this means, but I've been praying for you guys. And the Lord says, put the picture back on the wall. And that gets your attention if you're doing lines of coke, and your mama calls and says, hey, Put the picture back on the wall. So that's a, uh, that's a, you know, a word of knowledge that something's going on. In addition to that, it's a word of wisdom, what to do with it. Stop. There's, <laughs> so a word of knowledge has to do with what's going on right now or what has been going on in the past. And so that was, uh, that's something that we actually saw in our family's life. Um, and so that's, that's something that went on. But right here, you know, I want you to see what it is is not something you've learned naturally. It's not judgment. It's not if you see somebody and they act a certain way and you look at them and say, well, they must be this. Or if you see someone that, that's acting in a way that you don't think a guy should act, you make an assumption about their sexuality. That's not a word of knowledge. That's called judgment. Yeah. Okay? So that's straight up. Pastor, straight with you. So this is just something that the Lord tells you that you have no way of knowing. I was praying for a woman one time, and um, I, th I talked about it last week, the lady in, uh, that was barren. Did I talk about that last week? The lady that was barren, and I was praying for her, we were in McDonough, Georgia, and I went and got the elder's wife, and the Lord gave me a word of knowledge, when, and, uh, and I had to go get the elder's wife. The Lord told me this woman was barren and was having trouble conceiving. You better be right about that when you start asking those kind of questions. I had no way of knowing that. I hadn't had a conversation with anybody about that. I hadn't. Well, the Lord spoke that and dropped that in my spirit. And so I went and got a lady to come and stand beside me in leadership when I asked that. So if I had to back up, I could kind of let her step in. And, uh, but it was a word of knowledge, and it was right. And we prayed for that lady, and God healed her. And so uh, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about here is a word of knowledge, something you have no way of knowing outside of God showing you. Uh, and it always, understand, a word of knowledge always applies to the past or the present, the past or the present. And here, uh, I want you to see where it says in the scripture in Acts 9, uh, in verse 11, it says, And the Lord said to him, Rise, go to the street called Straight, at the house of, Ju uh, the house of Judas. Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he's praying. He had no way of knowing that, that Saul was there. He had no way of knowing that Saul was praying, outside of the Lord speaking to him directly. It was something that God revealed to Ananias that he had no way of knowing that Saul was over there hiding and praying at this house. And so that was a word of knowledge for Ananias here. And so uh, I want you to also see in verse, in, uh, verse 12 here, there's another one. It says uh, in verse 12, For he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. Uh, 
You know, Ananias had no way of knowing that Saul had had a vision. He had no way of knowing that Saul was actually expecting him to come. So he had no way of knowing that. And so God dropped that in his spirit, showed him that. He, he showed him that, that that had already happened. And I want you to see there's actually more here in this scripture. So it's like this. If I were to say to you, and you may have seen this in a, in a service somewhere before or something like that. If I were to say to you, and you may have seen me actually do this um, for, for God wanting to deal with something or heal somebody or, or deal with issues in your life. If I were to say to you, listen, there's somebody here that's been struggling. They have a tumor on their kidney, and they've been struggling with a tumor on their kidney. Now, I'm, now if this is you. I don't feel like I have a word of knowledge this morning, but if you're struggling with a tumor on your kidney, you should come up so that Jesus can heal you because that's... But if I were to say to you something like that, uh, just in passing when I'm given an altar call or something, what that is is a word of knowledge. I have no way of knowing that. So if I were to say to you, you know, there are people here that are struggling with fear, the reason I'm telling you that is because God has dropped something in my spirit that he wants to deal with at that point in time. Now, it doesn't have to always be, a word of knowledge doesn't have to always be about somebody wanting to get prayer, prayed for something. But it does manifest that way sometimes. It does happen that way. And what's the point? Well, when that happens, don't you think God wants to do something about it? Yep. Why would the Holy Spirit point that out unless he wants you to act on that? Unless he needs, you know, a lot of time God operates with us on a need-to-know basis. Sometimes we don't just need, we just don't need to know. But if we need to know and he gives you a piece of information, he, he wants you to do something with it. He wants you, he expects you to at least pray about it. You know, sometimes God may show you something for no other reason just so you can go into intercession. And that's where some wisdom and things come in, how to deal with these issues. But that's called a word of knowledge. So that's called a word of knowledge. So all of, a lot of times with a word of knowledge, what I want you to see, these gifts, I talked about how they can work in conjunction with one another. A lot of times a word of knowledge will work in conjunction with the gift of healing. So if God is, is calling that out, if he's pointing that out, he's doing it for a reason. Why? So that you can be set free. And so that's one of the ways that, that God works with a word of knowledge. All right. So, I've covered every bit of that. Awesome. Word of wisdom. Let's look at a word of wisdom. I want you to see a word of wisdom is similar to a word of knowledge. It's similar to a word of knowledge, but uh, a word of wisdom is a revelation by the Holy Spirit of some piece of information about the future. So it's not just what's going on, but what should I do about what's going on? How should I handle what's going on? You know, you can even know something naturally. You can know that a situation in your, in your family, a situation with a friend, a situation with a coworker is jacked up. But the Lord can speak to you specifically and tell you how, to, how to, he wants to intervene with that, how, how to help with that. That's called a word of wisdom. Now listen, uh, I know many of you may have heard the definition of wisdom. A lot of times wisdom can be referred to, or natural human wisdom, as bought and paid for experience. That means you got that from the school of hard knocks. Yeah. My daddy used to say, son, you can learn this the hard way or the easy way. Inevitably, I like to learn things the hard way. I don't know why. <laughs> and he continued to help explain that to me. And uh, this is not that. It's not, it's not stuff that you've learned over the years so you gather it all together and you know what to do with the situation. This is when God specifically, like, he specifically tells you how he wants to handle something. Um, and, and it's shown, there's one shown actually right here in this same passage of Scripture. And so you have these two word of, words of knowledge. Hey, listen, Saul's over here at this place and he's praying. That's a word of knowledge. And it says, listen, Saul has seen a vision. That's a word of knowledge because it has to do with the past. And he also said, but here's the deal. I want you to go and I want you to lay hands on him so that I can heal him. This is, this is what's going on and this is how I want you to handle what's going on. That word of wisdom is I'm going to heal him and I'm going to do it using your life. Amen. I want you to go lay hands on him so that he can regain his sight. Ananias, I want you to go over here, and when you pray for Saul and lay hands on Saul, I'm going to heal him. That's the word of wisdom. That's how I want to handle this thing. And Ananias is steady going, um, Lord, you sure about this? Because I'm not, I, know you, I know you're a smart guy, but are you sure about this? Because this guy usually kills Christians. And, you know, I'm going over, and I'm going to say, hey, you know, Jesus sent me to come 
you ain't going to kill me. Or Jesus sent me to come heal. You see, you get healed. What I want you to understand about these gifts is these gifts, when they operate in your life, they may be supernatural. Sometimes they may be things that are just crazy. But what I want you to know is that doesn't make you Superman. That doesn't make you special. What that makes you is a conduit of the power of God to set people free and to see people get healed, to see lives change. But what it doesn't make me, what it doesn't make you is, is, is it makes you what a normal Christian should be. That's what it makes you. That's what it makes us. And so God wants to operate. These are the first two, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And like I said, a word of wisdom, it always deals with the future. A word of knowledge is the what. A word of wisdom is the how. The word of knowledge is what's going on, what has gone on. And a word of wisdom is what do you want to do about it? How do you want to handle this situation? A lot of times, and it also could even include timing, things like timing. You understand a lot of times it's, it's easier to know the what's going on than the when you want to deal with it or how you want to deal with it. It's a lot easier to know those things. It's a lot easier to know those things. So, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Those are the first two that we've dealt with here. <clears throat> so, Let's look at discerning of spirits. I want to take a look at the next one. And we talked about these are the revelatory gifts. When I talk about revelatory gifts, let me explain what I mean. Um, you ever heard to Revelation or Daniel referred to as an apocalyptic book? The word apocalypsis means to uncover. It's an apocalyptic book. Uh, revelation is the revelation of Jesus or uncovering of Jesus. It's like, let's pretend like this bottle is Jesus. Okay, let's, I know this bottle is not Jesus. I'm not, I'm not insane. Let's just pretend like it is. <laughs> let's pretend like that bottle's Jesus. What revelation means is you can't see this, but when I uncover it, you have a revelation of it. You can understand it. You can see it. That's what these gifts do. Uh, these three gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits, are something that the Holy Spirit uses to uncover what's going on and to show how to deal with it. Does that make sense? Cool. So discerning of spirits. You can go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. So the discerning of spirits is a supernatural ability to see or to comprehend, to have revealed to you into the spirit realm in order to discern what is going on, what is an operation, what spirit is an operation in a given situation. You know, it may simply uh, come to a situation where, where God just tells you what it is, it also may, may be a situation, yep. It also may be a situation where God shows you what's going on. Um, have you ever heard anybody say that they'd seen an angel? Anybody ever heard that? Okay. Anybody in here ever seen an angel? Have. This is, the, this is through the gift of discerning of spirits. Okay. And so what happens is, is God opens your eyes to see something that's there that you may not be able to discern and see with your own natural ability, okay? And uh, God, God does this, and, and it just reveals what's going on. Uh, there's different things that can operate. You need to understand, you guys believe in a God, right? Yeah. Okay, if you believe in a God, you believe in the Bible, right? Okay, if you be, believe in the Bible, you understand that the Bible talks about a real devil. There's a real devil. He ain't just a figment of somebody's imagination. There's a real devil. The Bible calls him our adversary. Well, if there's a real devil, y'all said y'all believed in angels. There's real angels. Well, if there's real angels, guess what? There's a real devil, real angels. There's real demons. There really are those because all a demon is is a fallen angel. The Bible said that when Lucifer got kicked out of heaven, and by the way, he got kicked out of heaven, just like University of Florida is kicking one of them field goals or something, just, he just booted, Jesus booted him right out of heaven. And the Bible says that he got kicked out of heaven, and a third of the angels, he must have been pretty convincing, because a third of the angels followed him. And so these things are real. Why am I telling you this? Am I trying to get weird and spooky? No. I'm just trying to tell you that there's different forces involved in your life. We talked about the other day that most of the time the devil doesn't even have to get involved in our lives to mess them up. We do a pretty good job on our own. We do. But discerning of spirits can show you what's going on. If, if the Holy Spirit is operating in a situation, discerning of spirits lets you understand that. If the enemy of your soul is operating in a situation, the discerning of spirits helps you to, helps you to understand that. 
You know, it helps you understand if this is really just somebody being mean, it helps you understand that it's just a human that's operating here. There's all kinds of places uh, that, that intervention, that, that situations can come from. And discerning of spirits can actually show you that. Like I said, the other things that discerning of spirits can do is show you uh, what's actually going on, can, can re- open your eyes. You know, who was it? Was it, uh, it was... Uh, uh, you know, there was the, the servant, I was it, Elijah? Elisha? I can't remember. The scripture just came to my head. It's uh, when, uh, when he was there and his servant was, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, we're just this little small force. What are we going to do? And he prayed and he said, I've got to open his eyes so that he can see that there's more with us than there's against us. And God opened his eyes and there was a host of heaven surrounding him. That is what discerning of spirits does. It lets you see that God is in control and it lets you see that there's more with you than there's against you. It lets, it lets you open your eyes. <laughs> um, years ago, we owned a piece of property in Brunswick, Georgia. And uh, I, was, I had been at a church meeting. We had, this, we had this, this revival that was going on. And I, I pulled up to the house just for no other reason. I was just, I, as I remember, there was this little girl on the radio that was talking. It was like I was listening to a Christian radio station, and she was having some issues. I was praying for this little girl as I was pulling around the corner to the house, not even thinking about what was going on. And uh, when I pulled around the corner to the house, um, I saw angels in my front yard. Now, I don't know how to tell you anything other than it almost looked like, you ever seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Sorry, I got no other way to explain it. It almost looked like something that was opaque, uh, superimposed over live action. It was, it was as real. It wasn't as solid as me trying to poke you in the knee right there and you being that solid, but it, they were there. I saw them, and they stayed for, for a very short. I could see them for a very short period of time. But I, I did see that. That is an example in my life of the, the operation of discerning of spirits, where God opened my eyes to see what was going on, that my wife and family were protected that he had them. But that is the reality of how discerning of spirits operated in my life. And so that's what God may do for you. Now, if God has done for that, now here's what's happened. I've dealt with people over the years that have never had this stuff explained to them, that God moved on and showed things like this, and they thought they were crazy. Really. I mean, really. I've, I've seen things, I've talked to people that, that haven't talked about experiences and things like that that they've had for fear that, that different things that people would want to put them on and whatever. <laughs> But the, the truth of the matter is, is God does that. God does operate in the gift of discerning of spirits in your life. If, if that has happened to you, I'd love to talk to you. We can talk in, in confidence. We can talk in private. I'm not going to put all your business in the street. But you're not crazy. You're not weird. You're not strange. God just has something that he's doing in your life. Amen? It's okay. It's all right. All right. So... Let's move forward. Um, let me give you an example of a, of a biblical situation like this. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. <clears throat> it says, uh, As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. So Paul and them are walking around, and there's this chick that's a, that's a fortune teller that's following them. And uh, she had a spirit of divination. And uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's one of those demons I was talking about. And he brought, she brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. So she followed, followed Paul and us crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim you the way of salvation. And she kept doing this for many days. So she was causing a distraction. She was trying to cause a problem. She was just aggravating and trying. Every time they try to minister, she's just, she's just stirring up stuff is what she's doing. And uh, she kept doing this for many days. And Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. Now listen, it doesn't say that Paul said, hey, what's your name? He didn't ask. He didn't, didn't do any of that. Paul discerned that. You know, what she was saying was true. These men were servants of the Most High God. And they had come to show the way of salvation. But what she was doing was operating in a way that was causing a problem. And discerning of spirits let Paul know what was going on, showed Paul what was going on, and he was able to deal with it. Not because of what she was saying, but because of how she was acting and and the Lord revealing what was going on. And the Lord showed him, and he dealt with it. That was discerning of spirits operating in Paul's life. All right, let's move on. 
talk about the power gifts. Where am I at as far as time-wise, y'all? I'm okay. Um, special faith. Let's talk about faith. Now, the power gifts. These are called the power gifts. These are when we get to do the stuff. Remember me talking about uh, the guy uh, asking when we got to do the stuff? <laughs> this is... This. Do I now? Yeah, I gave up drugs for this. Exactly. <laughs> he was talking about, I gave up drugs for this. He got the uses where you get to do the stuff. Special faith. Let's talk about special faith. Now listen, this is not the faith that each is given. The Bible says to each is given a measure of faith. What is that talking about? To each is given the measure of faith that's needed to believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To each is given the measure of faith to understand that Christ died for your sin. To each person, to every person, because God wants everyone to be saved. I cannot read that. James is holding something up. I cannot read it. What's it say, James? Ten minutes. minutes, Thank you. (laughs) Ten. I can see this. Um, But this is not that measure of faith. This is a special faith that God will give you in certain situations that you can believe for anything, that your faith level goes through the roof. It's, It's a gift of faith. Now, this has only happened a couple of times in my life, in my career, that I can really say that I operated, I believe, in a gift of faith. And, uh, you know, this is not the measure of faith given to every believer. This is not human faith. This is not even faith that comes by hearing. This is not even the, like the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is not even that. This is something different. This is something that God gives you for a specific situation. Um, I was praying for a guy um, in, up in Georgia. I can't even remember where we're at now. But I was praying for a guy who had cancer of the spine. He had spine in his cancer. He had cancer in his spine. He had so much cancer, he had a little bit of spine left. He had cancer in his spine. It had degenerated his spine. And he was, he was, he was really crouched down. He'd lost a lot of height, all this other stuff. Barely mobile. I'm really, he was barely mobile. He was on a cane, and they were helping him. And uh, we started praying for the guy. It wasn't just me. There were a couple others. We were on a ministry team, traveled together, ministered together. And God healed that man. And I knew that anything, I just, I just, there was just this thing that welled up inside me. And I knew that anything that I asked the Lord for right there in that situation, he would do. I can't explain this to you, but I knew if I asked God to turn the sky orange for this guy, he would have. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was awesome is what it was. But I began to speak to this cancer. I began to speak to his spine to begin to straighten. I began to speak to and call out what, what I wanted to happen in this guy's life. And God did it right in front of my eyes. It was, it was, I'm talking about it didn't something that happened six, it's God did it right here. This guy grew about that much. We had him standing against the wall. We had him up against the wall and he grew and his spine straightened up. It was medically, it was medically verified. It was, it was amazing. He took his cane. This guy, I'm telling you, was barely mobile. Took his cane. They hung it on the wall of the church. It was crazy. And he was, he was running up and down steps. Now, this isn't something I saw on TV. This is something that Jesus did with me standing there. Did that make me anything? No, it made me a conduit. It's what it made. But I knew in that time that anything that I asked the Lord for, it wasn't that, you know, I have to get up the faith to believe for this. I just knew that it's all of heaven's power to deal with this situation was at your disposal. You just, it had the, that's the gift of faith. That's a special thing. That's not something you can walk around with. That's not something you, God gives it to you for a finite period, for a finite thing. And that's called a gift of faith. I really believe that's what it's called. And so the other time I can think of is uh, God healed this lady. She uh, was in, we were in Brunswick, in Brunswick, Georgia. Um, you can go, if you want to visit her, she still, I think, works at Winn-Dixie in Brunswick. Um, but anyway, this lady had been in a major car accident, major car accident. Her neck had, spy, had, uh, had rods put in her neck to hold it straight. It crushed her neck. And uh, she, was having some, she was having some issues. She responded to a, to a call that we had at the altar for a word of knowledge, a, a, a call that, I, that God had brought to me for a word of knowledge. And uh, it's amazing how the gift of healing works, um, the special faith and the word of knowledge all work together. This lady responded to it, and she came up, and although she had rods in her neck that were holding her neck straight, she couldn't move her head. God unlocked her neck. I don't understand. I don't know how that works. 
I don't know what to tell you. All I know is, is as I knew when I was praying for that lady, I, when, I, when I asked God to unlock her neck, I knew he would do it. I absolutely knew. The next day, I was still working a, working a job at the paper mill. Then the next day, I'm going to work at the paper mill, and I didn't know where she worked. I didn't know who she was. And uh, the next day, I went to run in Winn-Dixie and grab something before I went to work, needed some food, head to work, and uh, she starts yelling. Some of this lady starts yelling across the, across the thing. She's a cashier. I didn't know that. And she's telling people about what God had done for her. And she's screaming, that's the guy. That's the guy. I was like, whoa, I didn't do nothing. It wasn't me. I didn't do nothing. And so I don't know what she's talking about. And so anyway, God had healed her, and she had no pain. She, was, she, had, she went, and it was medically verified. I think the pins are still in there, but the lady can move. It's absolutely crazy. And uh, still to this day, she'll catch my mom, and she'll say, how's Kelly doing? How's he doing? She goes to the home church that I grew up in and was ordained at. And uh, it was God operated in a gift of faith there, and he operated in healing. God healed that woman. Healing is when God restores something that's broken. When, God, when, when you have something that's broken in your life and your body that that lady had, uh, God heals. It's the power of God. Healing is the power of God flowing into an individual to cure disease and, and illness. Listen, I want you to understand that there's nowhere in the Scripture that ever says that God withdrew these gifts. There's nowhere in the scripture that God says, listen, those were, that was the age of miracles and God used to do that then, but he doesn't do that anymore. Come here and show me. You can't because it ain't there. And so, you know, God did that then. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do that now. He will do that now. We're still living. Do you understand that acts really never ended? You're living in those days. You're living in the days that we're waiting on Jesus to return. That's what the whole book of Acts is about. It was the acts of the Holy Spirit, what he did through believers. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is still active in your life. Although we're not going to write more scripture, you still have the opportunity to live a life like that. You still have the opportunity to live a life that's not just just the norm. Just the norm. Um, I highly suggest, there's a book I highly suggest for you. It's, it's by a guy named Watchman Nee. It's called The Normal Christian Life. And it's what normal Christianity really should be like. It's what it really should be, and is in a lot of other places. And so healing is something that God will do to restore a person that's sick, restore a person that, that's in diseased. Um, you know, we've, we've seen healings. Uh, Marcia and I prayed for her grandmother, who's still alive today. She was suffering from cancer two minutes, suffering from cancer. And uh, she had cancer of the throat, and it had closed her throat up to the point that she had to have a uh, breathing tube put down. And it grew some more to the point that it was pushing out the breathing tube, and she had to have a smaller one put in. And this was how, how many years ago would you say this was, Marcia? 15 years ago? 15 years ago. We, Marcia and I went and prayed for her, and that cancer went away. It didn't just go into remission. They couldn't find it. It, it dried up and died and went away completely. And she's still breathing. She, don't, she got a lot of other issues in her life, but she don't have throat cancer. A lot of other issues. But that was 15 years ago. God healed her. That was a gift of healing that, you know, that God used through our lives. And so anyway, uh, let's, look at, let's look at Mark chapter 5 real quick. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years, who suffered much under many physicians, and she spent all that she had and was no better but grew worse. She'd heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, understand this, for she said, if I touch even his garments, I'll be made well. That's a gift of faith. God told her, spoke into her heart, if you touch his garments, you'll be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up when she touched his garments. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. There was a gift of faith that if you reach out and touch the hem of Jesus' garment, if you reach out and touch Jesus, you're going to be made whole. It's a gift of faith. I think even maybe a word of wisdom. And then she says, and she reached out and touched him, and she was healed of her disease. 
And so there was a gift of healing there that operated in Jesus' life. What's great in me is this next passage. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power, that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? He wasn't even active involved in this. He wasn't even, I mean, his life had so much power that he didn't even actively lay in hands on anything or anybody. He was a prayed up, walking, he was, he was walking as a New Testament believer. He was walking this earth as an example of the New Testament believer. And there was something really, really special about him as a New Testament believer. Obviously, he was the son of God. But he was, he was living as an example of how a New Testament believer anointed with the Holy Spirit should operate, or can operate at least. And Jesus perceived in himself that that power had gone out. And he turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? It was throngs of people just all, of, all up on Jesus, all in his face. And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. This faith that's operating in your life has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Jesus still heals today. You know, if you, if you need to be healed, we talked about we're connecting people to God, to people, to purpose. If the gifts of spirit are operating in your life and people's lives are being changed, whether it's a physical thing, whether it's a spiritual thing, whether it's their marriage, whether it's this, whatever it is, you are connecting people to God, to people, to purpose. You are being a conduit of the gift of God into people's lives. That is connecting people to God. That's what that is. That's connecting people to God. And so anyway, the other is, is miracles. And I'm going to, I got, can I have three more, like three more minutes, please? The other, and we're going to, we're going to go here today. And we're going to finish this. The other is miracles. And the miracles are the supernatural setting aside of natural laws to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. Listen, it's, if Newton's law is set aside, that was a miracle. If all these things were, that's a miracle. Second Kings 6 is an example of a miracle. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elijah, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, and each of us there get a log and make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your service. And he said, I'll go. So they went with, he went with them, and they came to the Jordan, and they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water. Axe head sink. Pretty easy, right? We're all in agreement with that. Axe head sink. And he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. So it wasn't his axe head, and it was gonna it was gonna be a bad situation. He said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick, threw it in there, and made the made the iron float. And he said, take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. So I don't know if he suspended the law of gravity or altered the mass of iron. I don't know what happened. All I know is there was a miracle done there because iron, uh, unless it's in, made into a certain shape, flat piece of solid piece of iron does not float. That was a miracle. That's when a supernatural, uh, a, law, a natural law was supernaturally bypassed, supernaturally altered. Five practical things. The Holy Spirit will help you to see what you cannot see in your own ability. We talked about these gifts today. Number one, the Holy Spirit will help you to see what you cannot see in your own ability. Number two, the Holy Spirit will give you specific direction for issues that you're facing. The Holy Spirit will help you to see what's going on, and then the Holy Spirit will give you specific direction for issues that you're facing. Number three, the Holy Spirit will open your understanding, revealing. He will reveal. He'll open your understanding of situations that you face. The Holy Spirit will open your understanding through the revelatory gifts of situations that you face. Number four, when your faith is weak, the Holy Spirit can increase your faith to believe for the impossible. You know, the Bible says, if you believe, you'll say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea. That's a gift of faith. <laughs> That's a gift of faith and a miracle. And so God will increase your faith so that you can believe for the impossible. Listen, are you facing an impossible situation today? Yes. Do you have a situation that you cannot fix, that I cannot fix, that no amount of money can fix? You know what? You're in a good place for a miracle. Jesus can do a miracle in your life. 
Last but not least, says the Holy Spirit will use you to do the miraculous as a witness for Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to and will use you, if you'll let him, to do the miraculous as a witness for Jesus. Not as a witness for you, not as a witness for me, not as a witness for a particular domination or to a particular church, but as a witness for Jesus. We're connecting people to God, to people, and to purpose. Amen? Amen. Thank you for watching Connect Church Online. We hope you enjoyed it. For more information, visit us at our website at connectchurchjacks.org.